Good morning, Eric and William. Morning. Good morning. Can you hear us? Yes, we can. The, the 10 minutes are yours. So uh, let's go on. Good. Thanks a lot. Can you also see the shared slide? I can, Eric. Perfect. Yes, thanks, Walter. Uh, it's, it's great to be here um, and be able to present future of offices with you. Uh, I listened into the first keynote here, and, and I think we fit perfectly into this world. Um, the fantastic thing is that we're able to define this new ecosystem within IoT together. Um, we are Disruptive Technologies, um, and I'm the founder and president. And today I have with me uh, Will. So maybe you would like to introduce yourself, Will, one of our most successful partners. Um, just to let you know, there have been, I think there are about four times the employee they were last year, and they're working mainly with us on IoT systems um, to bring it all together. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Will, uh, CEO of Infocrim. So um, I wanted to start this uh, presentation to position ourselves and also Space World and maybe all of us into the future ecosystem. Um, and the way that we look at it is that today there's a lot of cloud applications out there. Started five years ago and it exploded. And that's what you see in the center of this slide. Um, and there's also analytics um, and there's starting to become context clouds. Um, but basically, all the information that is needed here comes from some sort of manual input in the beginning. So what Disruptive do is that we provide the input devices. And by providing the input devices to these applications, we are one step ahead to make the world autonomous. Also, on the right side, you see output clouds, basically, services, screens, and so on connected to the, in, to the internet. And when this is all in place, the world will become more and more autonomous. So if you heard about Industry 4.0 and IoT, this is it, and that is us. So just a few words about us before I give the word to Will that will talk more about use cases. We provide the world's smallest wireless sensor. It's always on, and when you touch it, it reports instantly to the cloud. If it reports every 50 minutes, it has a 15-year battery lifetime. It's all straight off the box working. Uh, there is no passwords. There is nothing. It just works. And um, the integration is on an API. Everything is included in the, in the same agreement. So there is a fixed price, and everything is just a one-stop solution from our side. On the top of this, we integrate with strong partners like InfraGrid and Spacewell. We have the following sensors that we started with. Touch, also a tactile touch, which is buttons everywhere for work order triggering or confirmations and so on. We have temperature, a very accurate one, um, from minus 40 to plus 85 degrees. So you can even use it in fridges um, and very reliable. So it actually works for 15 years, or to be honest, statistically, 12.6 years at 27 degrees. Proximity to 5 millimeters, so you can detect if a door is open or closed or for inventory control. It's running, obviously, real time all the time. Water detection um, for leakages and relative humidity. That also includes temperature. And there's tons of other sensors to come. So I can mention, give you a, a bit of a hint. Now we're in the lab, we're having a three axis accelerometer that will allow us to, or that will allow partners to do advanced analytics on, on conditional monitoring and predictive maintenance. And with a very long lifetime as well. So you can basically place these sensors everywhere that you need data from the environment. The way our partners work with us, like InfraGrid, is on the API. So we have built a fleet management system on top of on the API. So you can control disruptive as an organization in exactly the way, same way that you would do with a machine. Basically, this allows a very efficient way of controlling sensors. Here you can see the seller status over the SIM cards that is used. You can see the, the signal strength, 
you can manage projects um, and get health statistics on the sensors out there. Disruptive technologies is agnostic to use cases, like the CPU is agnostic to what applications runs on top. Um, so what I wanted to do now is to hand over to Will to talk a bit more on the use cases within commercial real estate and mainly the office environment. Over to you, Will. Thank you, Eric. And uh, I guess for the sake of ease, if you leave your slides up and then just uh, ping through, that will be great. Uh, Hello, everybody from an uncharacteristically sunny London, which is giving me this uh, unexpected angelic backflow. So I apologize for that. But um, it's really great to, to speak to you all. And I think, um, you know, we've only got five minutes now to go through some new cases. So there's a couple of points that I really want to, to hammer home from, from the beginning, picking up on not only uh, Space World's previous conversation, but what Eric has, has said as well. So the first um, thing to note is this, this concept of ecosystem. So. Uh, the future of the office and IoT in general, it, it's not going to be a one player takes all market. It's all about collaboration between different systems and people who have expertise in different certain areas. And I think that's going to increasingly become a, a feature of the future and certainly is kind of core to the DNA of, of I know, uh, disruptive and certainly integrated. Um, and then another point that I really want to touch on in terms of of hurdles that we've probably seen in um, smart building technology in the last decade or so, uh, leading to you know lots and lots of interesting pilots, but not rapid scale, is uh, an, uh, a previous inability to focus on two really core dynamics. One, simplicity, and the other is low cost, right? If you can hit those two things together, they equal scalability. And that's what um, we at Infogrid relentlessly focus on. Uh, and that's yielded um, some very strong dividends over the last uh, year and a year or so with uh, tens of thousands of, device of devices deployed to thousands of buildings globally and a sort of rapidly accelerating trajectory. So that, that's the sort of framework that I want you to, to view what we're, uh, we're talking about within. Eric, if we go on to the, the next um, slide, please. So within the smart office space, there are about a zillion of different use cases, and, and many of those we're working on live. But I think in the post-COVID era, there are three that are really shining through right now as, as high levels of priority. And be before I go into those, I want to come back to that ecosystem view and just um, explain a little bit about how InfoGrid works. So Disruptive have world-beating, tiny, long-lived, super powerful sensors. Sensors unto themselves are not use cases, and intelligence needs to be applied to those data inputs to create use cases. That does not, however, mean that the visualization needs to be done through the company that's applying the intelligence for the use case, and that's where the ecosystem comes in. So with Infogrid, we do have full end-to-end -end solutions, but I would say in the vast majority of our deployments, we're working with other partners, companies like a, a Spacewell or uh, an internal uh, application that's been developed by uh, an end client uh, to provide key data to kind of in-depth visualizations that they've built and know very well. So again, this is not something where everybody can... That's a very good point, Will. And, and that's why we think it's very interesting to collaborate with you as well, because you, you provide signals to these platforms all over the place, and you kind of take more the analytics position in some cases. But you also have apps that demonstrate your use cases towards the end client. And I think that's a fantastic position to, to take so that we all can work together and make sure that we don't do things on and on again with the same type of use cases. Exactly. And what you'll see in the office environment is people want a single pane of glass. They do not want to be logging into 10 different apps to get their 10 different use cases. And in some instances, they don't have one, and therefore you need to, to be able to provide something to, to fill that void. But a lot of times they have something they've been using for years, know and are familiar with, and they want to augment that with better data. So you know, when it comes to specific use cases, we've heard a little bit about occupancy already from Spacewell, and, and I, I want to double down on, on that and the importance of that uh, going forward. I would say it's not only about social distancing in the office right now, but it's about understanding how the office environment is going to evolve going forward now that there's this greater acceptance of and utilization of work from home. And so this may mean that at certain times of the week, you, you might shut down certain parts of the office to conserve cleaning and energy costs. Maybe that you move to an entirely flexible model or downsize your real estate. Maybe that you decide to upsize your real estate to give people more space than they historically have. But what you need to deliver any of those is good quality data. And to get good quality data at scale, you know, and the kind of organizations we're talking to are uh, and working with are, are global blue chip companies with hundreds of thousands of employees. So to get something out to, to real scale, it needs to be simple. It needs to be low cost. So I just want to double down on what Eric was saying about the disruptive sensor and just point this out. 
see on the back there a 3M strip. It is literally peel and stick, and that is the entirety of the installation. So no wiring, no connecting to the network. It goes via cellular. It's hyper secure. But um, they don't have a desk occupancy sensor. They do have, however, a temperature sensor. And with InfraGrid's uh, machine learning intelligence behind the, the scenes, you can turn that into a 97.5% accurate desk occupancy sensor. And it's at 40 euros for the device and a full year of service where you then own the device. So it's a completely different um, kind of uh, price point and therefore scalability. And I just want to reiterate this one more time. That's all you need to do. Peel that off and go and stick it in. So we could go ad infinitum about the, the generation, uh, the ROI and the value that you can bring from that. I think occupancy is well understood. I just want to hammer down onto that. If you want to scale it out, keep it simple, keep it low cost. And then that data is available via a, a web socket, a static endpoint, anything you want into any kind of system, either your own uh, end client system, a third party like Spacewell or anything like that. And we also provide you know analytics and, and visualizations if, if you want. Uh, Eric, if we just quickly move on to the next use cases. So the the the, the next thing that's um, very obvious here is um, once you have this utilization data, using that to to provide a safer and cleaner environment is really critical at the moment because people are uncomfortable coming back to the workspace. So use, using real time data not only about uh, desk utilization or meeting room utilization, but also bathrooms even down to the individual cubicle, mapped with real time user sentiment can allow you to move to a much, much uh, higher quality of clean with the same staff that you've already got. It means, uh, you know, once that door has been opened 10 times, send somebody to wipe the hand. Once that cubicle has been used 10 times, send somebody to go and replace the paper towels, et cetera. Again, using tiny little sensors like this, hyper scalable, hyper simple. One last use case, and then I know that we are uh, running out of time. Uh, so the last thing is what we're seeing from a lot of our, our service providers in terms of uh, facilities managers or people who are contracting cleaners to come in is sometimes there's a concern where that subcontract is that this is actually taking place and that they're not just coming and emptying the track. So uh, cleaning validation, again, using some infrared intelligence on top of uh, basic sensors, you can start to detect whether mopping is taking place, whether uh, wiping is taking place, whether the floor has been vacuumed and how long those cleaners was, were on site and give a real-time validation score. You can also use the same exact data, so no new hardware required, to provide things like kiosk um, views of how many people are currently in a space or how much it's been used so that people can choose to their own comfort level whether they want to enter. I'm going to pause there, but I just want to re-emphasize simple, low-cost, therefore scalable, and it's an ecosystem, so let's all work together. Thanks very much. Thank you, William. Thank you, Eric. Thanks a lot, Will. Thanks to you as well, Walter.